I would definitely recommend doing this in a location that you do not care about getting a lot of speeds literally everywhere. Okay, back at the manifold. Only thing I believe I have to weld is the inside. So, uh, so now I have this sweet zip tie set up. Uh, just some aluminum stock that I had left over. Threw some zip ties on it so that I can get far back in the inside of the intake manifold and uh, get all the get to all of the welds. I'm gonna go ahead and set up a time lapse and try and get this welded. Well, that went pretty well, actually. Uh, I probably could have cut this much shorter because I didn't actually need it to be that long, but I was able to get in there. Uh, maybe I'll try and take a picture of the welds because it's, it's really kind of impossible for this camera to focus on that. <clears throat> but it turned out pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm um, not sure what else to say, but I do need to still mount the distributor mount so uh, might actually I might actually work on that so I got a couple questions about why I was moving the distributor mount in the last video and I just want to try and explain it really quick so this is the stock distributor and here's the cast iron marine intake so this is basically the exact same location that the stock just uh, intake manifold mounts the distributor so you can see I'll line it up there and then the distributor cap itself sits on there, line that up. So you can see that it's basically lined up. So the spark plug wires you know, are perpendicular to the engine and the cam sensor is kind of like angled. So if I were to use the other intake manifold stock bolt hole location, it would have wound up turning the distributor uh, something like that. And it would have probably put the cam sensor like connector like right into the firewall and then it would have angled these plug wires like into the firewall and forward and I didn't really want to deal with potential clearance issues so that's pretty much why I'm doing it and I need to use this kind of distributor because it has the cam sensor and uh, I wanted to keep this the stock computer as an option for the, the new intake manifold. So yeah, that's why I'm doing it the way I am. So I machined up uh, this little block. So this little block sits down where the distributor sit and it's pretty, pretty good fit. And then I also cut up this little piece of uh, aluminum and it basically just lines up with both holes and I'm gonna set up and weld this on <clears throat> with the bolt holes uh, lined up. Uh, and then I'll be able to use uh, this hole and you know this block to line up the bolt location for uh, the distributor mount. And I machined this little uh, block up out of just some aluminum stock so that it you know fit right where the distributor mount needs to go. So then I can uh, use this little jig to mount this on the new intake manifold and get it welded.
pretty much all the welding done. Um, it's gonna start grinding off uh, the welds to make it you know more aesthetically pleasing. Try and get you know, an even finish where all the welds are. Uh, it's gonna take a while, so I'm just gonna set up the time lapse and start going at it. So hopefully it doesn't take too long. So I decided to try and mill the top kind of Edelbrock emblem portion of the manifold off. I actually bought a handful of collets to try and reduce the size so I could fit it in there. And I'm like barely, I'm probably like a quarter inch or so from maxing out the machine. But using a fly cutter and then I should have to maybe like clean this up with a file or something but it's working but I'll just have to make another pass over here to clean it all off but then it will be uh, nice and flush one less thing that I'd have to have the machinist do so let's keep going at it well more work on the manifold I am currently setting up a media blaster that attaches to pressure washer. It's basically got this little ceramic nozzle, the siphon tube, picked up some number 10 uh, 100 to 170 grit uh, glass beads. I got some cutoffs from the manifold and just some pieces of aluminum plate and yeah, I'm going to try and see if this thing does good enough to uh, do the whole manifold. Sorry about the wind noise, if there is any. Kind of had to do this outside because it's going to make a huge mess. So, yeah, I'm going to set it up and get going. Okay, I would say that that was a successful first test, even though I'm now covered in glass beads. 100% covered. So, I would definitely recommend doing this in a location that you do not care about getting glass beads literally everywhere. Uh, it did work. Let me go grab the piece. So it's, it's still wet, so it's gonna be hard to tell. Let me dry it off. So I don't really know how well it's gonna get picked up. But yeah, you can see it, it worked pretty good. This is like a freshly machined surface. So the, the surface was pretty much perfect before I, I blasted it. And it just made it kind of a, a very shiny surface. You can see there was a little spot, maybe right there, that uh, I think I just, you know did a quick uh, weld spot so I could probably get it a little bit hit it a little bit longer and hopefully get that out but 
Uh, it's, it's not rough enough to really take out any imperfections. So this side uh, was welded. It was very crappy welds. But it definitely, you know, it takes the surface finish to a, a totally different level. All right, so I did another round of testing and it turned out okay, but I think I'm going to have to go up in grit size or or down, I guess, more coarse grit. I sanded it with three different uh, grits of sandpaper just to see how much I would have to sand the manifold down. And even with sanding 120 grit, um, it's going to be probably impossible to see on camera, but you can still very, very finely see like the scratches. Okay, so last minute I decided to run to Harbor Freight. Got the last thing of this 80 grit blast media. All right, so I think I'm just gonna go for it. I taped up all the spots that I don't want to media blast, so. Let's just do some of this and see how it looks. All right, it's been a while, but I dropped the manifold off at the machine shop. So while I'm waiting for that to get done, I'm going to try and wrap up the fuel rails. Got them mounted here in the vise, and I'm gonna be uh, doing the finish machining for the injector ports. So I already got this one all uh, programmed up and I'm ready to hit the go button, so. I'll hopefully not screw this up. So, here goes nothing. Well, I was able to get the injector bungs wrapped up on both rails. Surface finish looks like it came out pretty good. And really the only thing left for the fuel rails is to clean them up and weld on uh, these dash six bungs on each side. And then Basically, uh, just bolt them on once I get the manifold back. I'm gonna have to make new fuel lines for these uh, because the routing is gonna be different. But yeah, so let's get these cleaned up and ready to weld the bungs on. Well, that went pretty good. I have to say, uh, the welds don't look terrible. Hopefully that should hold. I'll probably wind up doing some pressure testing on them once I have a, a fuel line mocked up. And then, uh, yeah. So that's done with the fuel rails. Uh, so once I get the manifold back, I'll be able to start mocking up the fuel lines and get those knocked out. I don't know if I'll, I'll probably have to order some fittings. So that might take a few days to get in. And then really, um, yeah, just put it back together and then get this manifold running and put it on the dyno and see what kind of power we can make. So I'm really pumped how those came out. So yeah, stick around if you guys want to see the manifold all done 
and the truck running. Hopefully it won't be too long before I get it back from the machine shop and I'll be able to get this thing running. So we'll see you later. Beep.